So Bobby, Bobby got some good news. What's your good news? What's your good news? Don't do it, girl. Don't do it. I know you're thinking about it, girl. You was thinking about it. Power 2025. Congratulations, we are pleased to offer you admission into Howard University for the fall 2021 semester. You have been admitted into our management program. Woo! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Stop! college that I've heard back from. The first one I heard back from was from U of H. I got on at U of H as well. So I think I applied to, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know. Maybe like 10 schools. So two for 10. We'll just say I applied to 10, I don't know for sure. But yes, I applied to a couple more schools. I actually applied to a lot of reach schools like Berkeley. I applied there, but I'm really probably not gonna get in because pretty much like nobody at my school is in Berkeley. So, but I still just wanted to apply just to apply. So. Well, that's one. Well, what about the people who are scouting you? How does that work? Oh, so I have like a couple options to play basketball in college, but I'm really not sure. Like, I don't know because. I've kind of always wanted like the bigger school experience, but I also like can see like how how it is appealing to go to a smaller school. So I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna go to any of the schools because all the schools that are like interested in me playing basketball for their school, nothing is like official or anything. Um, they're all fairly smaller schools, so we'll see. I think the um smaller school experience could be good because it's like you won't have like 500 students in one class like the professor will know your name it's more like personal learning thing mm -hmm. but i don't know i'm really not sure yet i'm just weighing all my options i'm probably not going to decide till i get all of my decisions till i get all of my decisions <laughs> till i get all of my like um final decisions back from schools that I'm applying to so and I probably won't find out till late probably I probably won't have all of them back to like March at the latest so she's torn where the so maybe you guys can help us with this don't be looking at my face y'all <laughs> so she's torn between and I get what she's saying so if they offer her a scholarship to play ball um, it'll be a school, you know, that she didn't apply for and it'll be a smaller setting. But then the schools that she applied for, it's like, does she go for that big college experience, but with no scholarship because it's a once in a lifetime experience? Or does she go where she'll be playing ball? Because if she goes to the other schools, you probably won't be playing ball, yeah, right? No. She won't be playing ball, but she really enjoys it. Um, or does she go the route where she gets, you know, a scholarship, an academic, and for sports? So she's torn between those two things. I have talked to people that are on both sides of the fence. Some say go where the money is. Some say, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I had an opportunity to get um, to go to Howard University. But I was kind of talked out of it for certain reasons and they were right. <laughs> and I didn't go to Howard and that's one. It's, 
I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a regret, but I wish I had gone to Howard just to have that great college experience. Instead, I went to University of Texas at Austin where I didn't have a great college experience. And I was an older student too. So when I went to UT, I had um, already had my associate's degree. So I was like the older student coming in. So and I didn't really bond and I was, you know, straight from the streets, from New York, Brooklyn. It was just, it just, it just didn't work for me. But then at Howard University experience, baby, I'm going to have to come up there and be <laughs> on a yard with you on it. Don't be trying to hate on your mama. You're like, this is my mom. She cute, cute. You know, she cleans up well. Don't look at her right now. But she cute. Get on a yard for homecoming and stuff. <laughs> you don't want me coming? You can come. I'm going to embarrass you, Bobby. No. But I mean, mom's gonna be up there looking like a college student. <laughs> <laughs> See, but I just have so many options, and I don't know which route to go. And I don't want to make the wrong choice. But I feel like either any school that I go to, like all the schools that are like offering, or like, or I have looks in, are like they're like good schools, but they're just not. Um, schools that I would have like applied to like some of the schools I've never even heard of before but I don't know and then at the other part of me um I don't want her to start her life in a lot of debt I'm I'm not even going to talk about the debt that I'm in and Bobby said like, you have your master's I was like I want to get my master's but I can't amass any more debt I, I just can't do it I, it's just ridiculous it's, it's like I don't I don't think I'll ever pay it off so, I don't want her to start life like that or be more responsible and make payments. You know, for me, it's been a, it's been a struggle. <laughs> so, I'm just like, I can't. <laughs> Hold on. And so, maybe to be different for her, you know, teach her to pay him off. But, so, that's the other part of me. Like, go where the money is and you want to play basketball. So I don't know, but I also want to have that great college experience and join a sorority. And that wouldn't be happening at any of the schools I'm going to. Why? That probably wouldn't happen. Cause they have sororities and fraternities at every school. Not every school. <laughs> like that's another thing, like Greek life may not be an option at, cause it's like, the schools are so small. Don't they have that at every college? Mm -mm. They have clubs and stuff. <clears throat> they don't have Greek life at every school. What? Like, if you're going to like a really small school, there's like less than a thousand kids. And they gotta have. <laughs> I'm. I don't know because I haven't researched any of the schools that intensively, but. It could, they could have it, they could not. <laughs> and see, I want her to see, and that's the one regret I do have in my life is that I didn't um, join a sorority. And I really regret, that's my one regret. Because that's a lifelong commitment. They look out for you. I'm like, if you're involved, you um, have those, your line sisters in your life forever. My AP at my school, she is a die hard AKA. Now her daughter is in college. She's an AKA. and Or she went through another fraternity. She just said she didn't really mind. Delta? I don't know what her daughter is. I'm, I'm not sure if her daughter is an AKA. But honey, she be wearing her pink and, I think pink and green. Every, you got pink and green, everything. It's her life. And she says, the, um, her college line sisters, she says they are like, almost like her blood. She loves them. They're her family. And you can go anywhere around the world and find another AKA. It's a bond that you have. Like the cues and stuff. They just do, the, do that thing. <laughs> so it's just an experience that I, I really want you to have. You gotta, you gotta do it, Bobby. So that, that's another thing. I have to live vicariously through you. Yippee! I got that. <laughs> 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 you gonna do it, Bobby? But you know, I still want you to do what's gonna make you happy. But you do value my input, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have I stirred you wrong? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> 
yeah we'll see we'll keep you updated when i get more um stuff back i should be getting my like baylor admissions decision soon i think next month and but a lot of my stuff will be in march really yeah i won't get my stuff till march so why so late that's just how it is oh okay like nyu since the admissions is until january I probably will find out for a long time yeah she applied to nyu i have now i was a little biased on that one nyu i haven't applied there yet we just, oh, oh, we we just, just had that conversation we just talked about did you do columbia no they sent me like a really like thick book it's a nice book i kept it, it was why so you nice. don't apply to columbia they they on the lineup that's one of the top schools too i know that's an ivy huh columbia is an ivy right so why you not apply you don't think you can get in it no this girl is top what percent of your school because you know she'll correct me if i'm top 13 top 13 percent of her class and she say a lot of the ivies they want top six percent and no that's like auto admission for a lot of schools it's like top six for like ut austin it's top six like i applied to ut austin but that's just like i don't know because if you're not auto admission at ut austin they say there's not a lot of spots left for like normal admission students um, and i'm not top six but we'll see um but like columbia i don't even know what their acceptance rate is but it's probably in the single digits honestly six percent acceptance rate and we have something at our school they're called scattergrams and they basically show like everybody who's applied from our school on a graph and it shows the GPA on the bottom on the X axis and then the SAT scores on the Y axis or vice versa. I don't remember. And then it'll show like an X or a check saying whether they got denied or got in. And then it'll also show you and where you rank and compared to those people on the scattergrams. So I think I looked in Columbia and they were all X's. Like, people will get denied from Columbia if they score 1,500 and have a 5.2 GPA. Really? Yeah, like, some schools are just so picky. And it's, like, also, like, like schools in California, they favor their California students. So, California students, I'm not going to say they get admitted first, but they get admitted first. And then comes to out-of-state students. That's why it's hard to get into any UC school, University of California school, because... They just favor their California in-state students. Well, when you filled out the UT application, you did that one, right? Yeah. Did they ask about your, if you know anybody who graduated? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Because <laughs> that also helps you, like having like alumni that went to the school. Well, what, what part of the application did I have? <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> what did it say? Because I think I had to ask you when you graduated or something. Oh. I don't know what you told me. But I do, I'm almost positive that I had to ask you for that, that they asked me for that. Oh, really? Because pretty much every school asks if you have... But you know, it was my maiden name back then. It's not Mitchell. I mean... Hall. Oh. You know, I was married a couple of times, you know what I'm Um... But I still get stuff. I don't know if it says Basil or if it says Hall. Yeah, I don't know what I put on there. I don't remember, honestly. That was a while ago. That was like a month ago. So I'm just proud of her. See aunties and uncles and cousins and our new subbies just for an update. I know you guys always ask about Clinton. Clinton's doing fine. Is he still in school? We don't know. Mm -hmm. But he's doing well. I talked to him the other day to tell him that um, Sydney... Oh, I, I said I wasn't going to say no names. I said I wasn't going to say no names. <laughs> that city wasn't feeling well. He's doing well. He's, You know, we chit-chatted via text for a little while. So he's fine. Not sure if he's still in school. Um, still no job. Right? Still not working. But maybe he's focusing on school. Maybe, you know, that's his path. But he's, he's, he's doing well. Sydney, she's... <laughs> Sydney. <Sydney. laughs> but she's feeling fine. She's just bored out of her mind. And so, oh, as I was saying, what I wanted to say is that even with Clinton, you know, this is all I wanted for him, whether it be a job or, you know, going to school, go to the military, you know, as a parent, we just want the best for our children. 
and I, a lot of people, a few people may not agree with my decision um, for him to go, but it seemed to have motivated him more than getting into a community college and he's doing well and living his best life on his terms and by his own rules. As a parent, I just want the best for all three of my kids. Right? Yeah. Well, super proud of her. And then Sydney will be next. Yeah, the college <clears throat> application process is so, it's like I have so many friends that like haven't started because I feel like it's not. It's a lot. Yeah, it's so much and it's not something, it's kind of something that you have to figure out on your own. Because I don't know about anybody else's school, but my school, we do have like amazing college and career counselors at our school, but they don't really, they give us so many resources about it, but it's just like, it's mainly like you, like you have to start it and like you have to really do it. So and she did all this. Like I was like, you need W2 what? Here, <laughs> just take it. Here. Yeah. Don't put my business in the streets. <laughs> She did everything. She even paid for all of her college applications and everything. She paid for all of that. Yeah, so it, it's been like a big process. So if there's any seniors watching, I would just say word of advice. The biggest thing, it may seem like a lot now, but the biggest thing is really just starting. And if you haven't filled out your FAFSA and you need to fill out a FAFSA, do that ASAP. Because the longer you wait, the the not I'm not gonna say the worse it gets but the longer you wait it's just like harder to get like money for school and stuff so that's like the biggest thing as well as your FAFSA and then just start honestly common app um coalition um application something like that I think it's called coalition something or you may have like state you know application like we have applied Texas just what advice just start and it may seem like hard at the beginning but it's just something you got to get through if that's mm -hmm. something you want to do is go to college because college isn't for everybody no, not at all not it's at all it's not for everybody mm -hmm. so it's just and it's like don't be worried about not knowing what you want to do because i don't know what i want to do so well you're torn between what yeah like i have options but i don't know like i'm not like a set like i want to be a doctor like I've wanted to be a doctor all my life. She but. thought about law, but what type of law? Oh, I probably go into like civil law. Mm -hmm. So that's like I applied as a political science major at one school, but and I, she loves that stuff. Yeah, I really do. But I don't know. It's just just starting. Is and I think when thing. you when you do something like that with civil law, it's like. It may not pay as much as the other branches that she could go into, but I think it makes more of an, in my opinion, I could be wrong, I think it makes more of an impact on the lives of so many other people. Just mm -hmm. like teaching, I feel as though it's on the same line of teaching, making a difference in the lives or, you know, that can change policies that's going to help people and so on and so forth. For right. Sure. So I think it for that it really shouldn't be about the money, just like teaching really isn't, but about your passion and um, what impact you want to leave in this world. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you should always do a job you're passionate about mm -hmm. because they always say if you find something you love, like working, it it won't feel like work. Yeah. But teaching doesn't feel like work, but all the administrative stuff. Yeah. And the demands that are put on teachers just makes it uh, monumental, like a monumental task. I mean, I'm on break and I'm still thinking about teaching and, and doing stuff during break with some of my students, which I need to go do that. So it's like it's nonstop. But for me, that part doesn't feel like this is on my own time. It doesn't feel like teaching. It's like, oh, I, I, I want to help these students. I, I want them, you know, to give them extra work and learn. So you got to do what you're passionate about. And then I still, once again, I know I said this, start in life with a whole bunch of debt. But then I also want you to have a, a college experience that, that you'll treasure for a lifetime. But you can have that at a small school, too. Yeah, you know, we'll and see. building those relationships uh, with your professors and stuff. I don't know any of my professors. I think I, I became close with one professor, and then after I left, that was it. 
-hmm. So you'll have that opportunity to really bond with your professors. And then when you need those recommendations, Mm -hmm. And I feel as though the relationships you build with your teachers, it's amazing because a teacher has the power that I don't think kids understand to change in the fluff of grade. If you're at a 68, they can give you 70. If you're at an 88, they can give you that 90. Teachers have that. But when you have that great relationship with that student, it's a no brainer. So for students out there who want to talk back to the teacher and be disrespectful, you, 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 you're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. So when you have a good relationship, a teacher can move mountains if they really want to. So that will be um, the plus of going to a small school because you'll build, you know, lasting relationships, meaningful relationships with your professors. And at a big school, honey, you are a number. The last name, they, they're not even going to know you. In most cases, they're not going to know you because the school uh, class sizes are too big. Yeah, like some schools I apply to, like at UT Austin, there's like 30,000 kids that go there. Mm -hmm. But like at one of the smaller schools, it's like less than a thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you want more personalized um, experience and education, small would be the way to go. If you have any advice that you can offer Bobby and financial aid or not financial aid scholarships and mm -hmm. um, How she can you know apply different things that you've done or know that someone else has done that'd be grateful I don't know. It's been ages for me I don't know anything about that stuff, but a lot of people always say oh, there's a lot of money out there There's a lot of money out there. So you need to apply for that lot of money a lot of money For sure. Where's your cash at Bobby? <laughs> help help the college student out. She said she gonna leave her cash out. <laughs> if y'all wanna help her with her college with her college her college goals, we'll leave it in the description box below. <laughs> you don't have to for all the aunties and uncles, but she's really a, a great, great kid. So Bobby Bowser, you got money up in here? No, I just cashed out. <laughs> So if you guys want to, you know, support her, you know Connie Child would have been all over that, honey. Uh -huh. We see Connie every day. I still open the front door every day. Connie. <laughs> there was a package every day. Just, you know, I still miss Connie. If I could go in the kitchen. Oh, Connie got that for us. Oh, this is the last one from Connie. Oh, Connie. Oh, poor Connie. And she, I was talking to Connie outside the door. And she was like, Ma, are you serious? What was I doing, Bobby? You was yelling at her day. <laughs> the front door. Now I looked up and I said, I know you're looking down on us, Connie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it makes me want to cry. Um, all right, guys. Give this video a thumbs up, like, comment, share, and make sure you hit the post notification so you know the next time we upload a video.